Hi everyone, today we're on location with the team in beautiful Oregon for day two of the 2016 Portland Mini Maker Fair. We're back in Portland this year promoting our updated Pro Series CNC machine. You may be surprised at how affordable, easily expanded, and heavy duty these machines are. Check out our website for prices, information, or use the contact us form there to talk to our sales team. As you may have seen in our day one wrap up video, we've had a great turnout and been busy helping folks design, make, and race derby cars, as well as presenting a diverse collection of our customer projects and free sample projects. One of the more popular activities in our booth this year is the real-time digital fabrication station, where participants can quickly design a 3D race car and watch as it is immediately machined live in front of them. The immediacy of going from a simple sketch to a completed race car within a few minutes helps instill confidence in both kids and adults who are often just as interested and engaged in learning how affordable and accessible modern digital fabrication is and how it might fit their business or hobby. Fusion 360. Oh, okay. Alright, it's 4.45 on the second day and last day of the Maker Fair here in Portland, and we've machined our last car body of the weekend. By the way, for those of you who keep track at home, it looks like the kids have made 625 cars this weekend, which is awesome, and hopefully everyone who wanted to was able to make theirs and have something cool to bring home, and for some of them, possibly spark a further interest in design and creation. I believe the maker movement is fueled by a number of things. The increasing availability of affordable creation machines, such as our industrial quality CNC machines, but also the emergence of affordable high quality 3D design software, such as Fusion 360 from Autodesk. Let's do a quick walkthrough of the workflow our participants are using to create their custom race cars using our Fusion 360 design template. We'll start from the side view sketch. This is where the majority of customization is accomplished. From this sketch, we can drive just about any body shape we might want, simply by grabbing the fit points and moving them in relation to each other and the wood block, shown here as a yellow bounding box. Once I've arrived at a shape that I like, I can hit stop sketch, and the parametric document will automatically update the profiles. From this basic three-dimensional shape, we've been customizing the remaining features by suppressing and unsuppressing features such as the air scoop and parametrically configuring the front and back top view geometry as well as the fillets and the cockpit depth. By doing some upfront work and defining parameters that work with our sketch constraints, I can ensure that most anyone can come up with something that is both their unique creation but also readily machinable from one side with the half inch flat end mill tool that we're using for this demo. Huh, it's not too bad. Let's turn the air scoop back on. And once we're done with the 3D model, we can switch to the cam workspace and update the tool pass for the new geometry. Since we've pre configured the cam tool pass strategies and the work offsets, we can simply use Command G or Control G to regenerate the tool pass. Sometimes I've been simulating the results so that they can get a better idea of what their car will look like. And if they're happy with that, I can use the post process button to send the G code to the mill control computer connected to our Benchtop Pro CNC machine. And that's the workflow we've been following this weekend for custom race car creation. Feel free to leave comments if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.